Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists, famous German physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of yeah. course. Yeah. 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 Heineck, Heineck and Shrub, good German names. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about treating a hamstring injury, which is fairly common, especially as you get older. Mm -hmm. um, it's not hard to do. Uh, it's easy to do when you get when you when you're young if you're doing involved in sprinting sports. Right. But as you get older, if you're like a, a weekend athlete yeah. and you go out and you've been uh, dormant all week, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you, you try to play hard, play hard, you yeah. try to run to first base, pretend you're 20 years old again. Yeah. And all of a sudden you feel a little. Yeah. Well, pop or pull or you know it's the it's the one you see if someone's going along and all of a sudden yeah they yeah. go like that so um, what we're gonna do is talk about the hamstrings a little bit and and how to treat them sure and um, well let's first why don't we get the spine here let's see what I thought we're done with the hamstrings not the spine Bob what? <laughs> here it comes oh it's coming to me it was coming to me well, I wasn't looking at it all right let's uh, all Why right. we got the spine up when we're talking hamstrings? Well, we're going to need to know where the hamstrings start and where they where they insert. Origin insertion, as they call that in anatomy. So where do they connect to on the bones? They connect what we call, like the, you'd call the sit bones or the ischial tuberosity here, right here. This is where they start. So on me, you know, if I'm facing this way, again, if you feel, you know, right here, there's your butt bone there. That's where your hamstring starts and it goes all the way down your leg yep. and attaches actually onto the, ooh, we got this That's one the here. knee over here. Yeah. So we got. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's put the femur right there. It's a short person. It's a real short person. So the hamstring starts here and it comes down, and um, actually, there's three muscles that make up the hamstring, and they attach down actually onto this lower tibia here. Right. It's a so, bi articulate uh, muscle. Right. It, it goes across two, two joints. Two joints. Very good. So it influences knee flexion as well as hip extension. Hip extension. So that's. Uh, so a mechanical a hamstring can do yeah. this, and when you're sprinting, you know, of course, this leg's going like this, and right. that's why why it can pull up and give you uh, problems there. Um, so we're going to talk about two types of injuries. One is when it happens right about in the mid belly, what we call it. They tend to happen in two areas. Mm -hmm. One is mid belly, or two, it happens right on the ischium itself. Yeah. Why don't we talk about the mid belly one first, Brad? Sure. Okay. There's, I guess they tend to grade them, this isn't something we tend to do, but uh, generally they come to us with a grade already, but sure. They grade it as a one, two, or three injury. One obviously is a minor injury, mm -hmm. probably minor tears, you know, probably microscopic, microscopic tears yeah. in, the, in the muscle. Obviously your recovery time is going to be a lot quicker with that. Two, which would be a moderate tear, mm -hmm. would be uh, probably a partial tear. Sure. Okay. And three, obviously the worst, and that'd be a rupture. Right. And mm -hmm. the tissues are actually torn apart from each other. And even with that, I think surgery is fairly rare. Yeah. I, I don't even know if I've ever known of anybody that had surgery on a hamstring tear. Yeah, you, you know, even like football players that they get a lot of them, you, they, you hear hamstrings injuries that are out for weeks, but they don't typically, I, I can't think of any surgeries, but uh, yeah, Clay, it's possible. Yeah, uh, Clay Matthews right now from, who is that team that he plays for? Uh, yeah, the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Yeah, he's out right now, and hopefully he stays out. But he's uh, he's been out for four weeks now. Yeah, I just yeah, looked this up. an issue. So uh, he's not coming back this weekend. I think he is coming back this weekend. Yeah, he'll probably retire. But uh, yeah, probably retire. But a lot of times, I think you can expect at least at least three weeks. Yeah. Before you're going to be typically in slower, and slower. Yeah. All so right. Let's uh, let's do the. This is a simple treatment. This is one you probably can't do yourself. You could probably do it with one hand by yourself. Uh, we'll show it both ways. Sure. Someone that can help you and someone that. And, you and uh, where are you getting this treatment based? Oh, on? I'm sorry. Yeah, this is um, this is from James Syriax. He's considered the uh, father of orthopedic medicine. He died around 25 years ago. He's written many t textbooks that are considered kind of the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, new techniques have come up since then, but uh, this one particular technique is still used by therapists today, very uh, cross-fiber friction massage, right. yeah. uh, and, and trying to get the muscle to heal quicker than normal. Yeah, he's, so. he's known throughout, throughout the world in the therapy business. Oh, absolutely. He's from England, so, or Great Britain. All right, Brad, well, if you don't mind laying flat on your stomach, Brad. Oh, yep. 
Okay, so what we're going to want to do, because the hamstring right now is actually being stretched a little bit, let's, let's say it's this, this is the one, we would actually would bring this leg up like this. Um, maybe I'd put it up against something um, to, to hold, support it, maybe a chair. A bolster. A bolster would work, or um, we could actually, even at some point, you could strap it, you know, you sure. use the belt and you have you hold it. But you're going to have to pretend like it's being held, Brett. Right, yeah, we don't have a bolster or a chair. To put so on. I'm going to go right in the middle of the muscle here, and I'm taking my fingers, and I'm actually kneading like this, is what I'm doing. All right, and this actually is, can, is actually very hard on the hands of the person who's doing this. Is this bad, Brad? No, no, it's fine. But I can see, I, I took my right leg and I held it up. Yeah, because it I, hurts, your, your hamstring's getting fatigued, isn't it, having to hold up? Well, not only that, but I think it's not my muscle contracted, you can't really need it yeah, as well. Yeah, you can't need it as so well. I'm trying to relax it by... Um, so yeah. this, this is doing two things. One, it's getting more blood flow to the area, which helps it heal. Two, it's going to break up any scar tissue that may be developing and help it heal stronger. Because what happens quite often is it heals and there's some scar tissue that's laid down, and as soon as you try to use it, boom, it breaks open again. Right. So this is to try to help it heal stronger and quicker. So that's one way. Um, if, why don't you just sit up, Brad? And, and how long after the injury would you start doing that? Oh, you can actually start this the day after. You actually can. And, and how aggressive would the person, if someone's trying to do it to their spouse or their well, brother? Well, it, it has to be with intolerance. Right. It shouldn't I mean, be making you scream. No. But you can, it might be a little tender. It might be a little tender, is exactly right. Yeah. I mean, if, if I were to do it on my own, um, what I would probably try is I would just put my foot up on a chair like this, so now my hamstring's relaxed. And you could do it with one hand. Sure. I mean, it's not as good. I guess you could even get in there with both hands. It's not like the same technique, really, but now I'm squeezing like this. Right. And but, it's probably harder to relax when you're doing it to yourself, but it's... Yeah, I mean, it might not work, but no, this, you know, if you don't have any other choices, this is, a, I think, a great way sure. to, to try it. All right, so that's the one uh, mid-belly. I, I tend to think that this one heals better than the other one, and that's the one that tends to, you know, the, where the muscle attaches to the sit bone or the ischium. Oh, before we get into this, we have a video with the foam roller. Oh that, yeah, that you can use uh, that will work on this too. So yeah, absolutely, if you go to our in Google, our uh, you know our, our uh, YouTube and say foam roller, you'll pull up that. Uh, Which video reminds well. me, you want to subscribe to us, Nancy? Did you got that up there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially if you're 40 or 50 or over, because we do have a lot of videos that provide advice on what to do when you're getting to that age in order to stay healthy and fit. Right, so, so you can keep playing. So you can keep, you know, even with the hamstring injury. Anyway, Brad, you kind of had a little experience with this one, didn't you? you yeah. Were, you, you were doing something and you, you injured the hamstring, or at least you thought you did. Right, and yeah, I was uh, doing a triathlon, this was about five years ago, and felt at the end of the race, I was, you know, pushing hard to get down to the race and get my time, etc. And I could hardly walk, I was limping, I felt an intense pain. Right up in there, it's like, oh man, I wrecked my hamstring, I pulled it, I tore it. I didn't think I was going to be able to train for probably two or three weeks. I was just in pain and limping. It was, uh, it was no fun. So the technique that we're, you're going to talk about, I did actually to myself. Right. Why don't I talk about it? And we'll I'm do sure. it this way first. Okay. So what, what we're going to do, again, is this time, if you're doing it to yourself, you're going to lay down. You're going to, again, have to um, lay flat on your back this time. So if I'm laying flat on my back and you bring your leg up and you're going to actually rub right by that bone or right off the bone uh, and again back and forth like this with your fingers trying to rub across the muscle and, and it's the same thing you're trying to rub and by the way we probably two or three minutes if you can yeah. do this. You can go up to five if it's you want. It's kind of like a cross, cross friction. Yep again yeah. you're crossing across the muscle here about five minutes. I would do it once a day to start off with, you could do it more, but I, I would start off with just once a day. Sure. And and again, every day, probably for a couple of weeks um, until it goes away. Yeah, you have basically. to listen to your body and see how it's doing, but should, we, should I show them that? Yeah, or? let's show so, it. Why don't you go ahead and lay down flat. Now, those sit bones, one thing I always tell people when I talk to them about their ischial tuberosities, if you sit on a hard chair and you bring your knees up, 
the you'll be, you'll feel you're sitting you'll feel on the sit bonds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those are the two bonds you're sitting on. I think we can hurt. do this. Is this going to be all right on this? Yeah, that'll work if we're careful. If you yeah. Now, if you're in your living room on a carpeted floor, you can lay and put your foot, your legs over the couch or over a chair. And this way, it puts the hamstring on slack. Okay, so my hamstring's here on slack. And right here, I can feel my sit bone, the additional tuberosity. And I'm going to go just up from that a little bit, and you, you'll find it. And you won't have to, uh, you know, you do, need, you, you do need to be in this flex position, though, yeah. because if you're trying to do it um, laying down or whatever, it, it's going to, the, the tendon's going to be too deep. You're not going to be able to get all the way into that area. And, and this helps put it on slack as well, right? Right. Yeah. It puts it on slack, but yet it does expose the tendon. Yeah. So laying flat like this, much more difficult to get that the area here. And I'm going to work back and forth on that. So he's going, again, across the muscle and the tendon. The muscle goes up and down. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's going across it. And he's really digging in deep. And yeah. you're kind of going. I'm not going to be doing this on video too much, Bob, because I'm a little shy. But digging into my buttocks in front of thousands of people. <laughs> he won't make the sacrifices for medicine apparently, <laughs> but uh, this is something, well yeah, you probably don't want to do it in public, but it is, this is, this is the way to get better. So Brad, are you going to talk about the way you did it? Right, and again, the hair was uh, at an event and there was hundreds of people, of course I'm a little shy about doing this <laughs> anyways, so I thought, well, I said there's a picnic table there, and it was outside. About the right height. Yeah, th yeah actually it was a little lower than this, which worked better. But I, I just went up against that same area, and I just put pressure on there. I wasn't able to go back and forth, but I just put pressure on there, and it kind of hurt, but it hurt so good. And all of a sudden, it, it just only took me about a minute. I was working it, and all of a sudden I could feel that muscle. It had to been tightened up as well from the injury. Kind of sure, that, it was that mechanism, Yep, that yeah. mechanism where it's protecting. And it let loose, and a smile went on my face, and I got up, and it was still sore, but much better. I could actually walk without limping, and, and life became much better for the rest of the day. And actually, I had sore muscle, but within a couple, three days, I was back to running, and, and it was very, very clear. Right then and there, that muscle let loose, yeah. and when it loosened up, it was just neat. I was the just, technique is amazing. Uh, uh, again, I, my wife had trouble with this particular one. And, and it can last a long time if you don't treat yeah. that hamstring injury. I mean, I, I, at some point, sometimes people have to have it injected. Yeah. Um, because it, but, but I would definitely give this a try first. There's no harm that can be right. done, really. And, and um, again, don't go crazy on it as far as increasing pain. It, it's, a lot of times the sign is that it does feel better when you're doing it. Right, like you said it almost hurts so good. Right. Like it, you can, yeah. That's often a good, a good sign. You know, and, and that, I'm sure, was a minor Strain. I mean, it wasn't like it was a grade three. Right. You're not going to, you know, fix it like that on that, but, you know. So, all right, all right. Good luck with it. Well, once again, Bob, before we go, I really need to talk about what we can and we can't fix. And I think we can fix just about anything and can help fix. you, but one thing we're not going to go into is what, the broken heart. heart yeah. <laughs>